Okay, so you want to autofill dates in Excel based on another cell. We're going to look at several calculations here. You might want to add days, months, years, or working days to your start date. First of all, I'm going to show you how to do this with the sequence function. If you don't have the sequence function, I will later on in the video show you how to do this with other functions that you will have. So let's start off by returning days based on the start date. Just a heads up, all my dates are in US format. So for this, I'm going to use the sequence function. Now the first argument is rows. So I'm going to arrange my dates in this column and I need to specify how many rows in this column I'm going to fill with dates. So the value for that is in here in C2, number of days, five days. I don't need more than one column, so I just skip over that argument. And my start value is in here, C3. So I close the bracket and press Enter. Now, this will return the date serial numbers. If you want to convert them to actual dates, you need to select the cells. And then up here on the Home tab, change the format of those cells to one of the date formats. Now, if I change this number to 10, it would return 10 dates. Now, if you want to return a series of dates as column headings, you can also use the sequence function for that. Equals sequence. Rows I would ignore because I only want one row. So just a comma. Then columns, that would be five columns referenced up here in C2. And my start date would be this start date here. Close the bracket, press enter. And again, I need to format the cells. And if I change this to say seven dates, it would return seven dates, the sequence function. Okay, so that's how you return days based on a date in another cell. What if you want to return months? Well, you can do this with the edate function has two arguments, start date, which we can reference here, and then months. So if months contained the value two, it would return a date two months on from my start date. I want to return the months value using the sequence function. So I want 10 dates, or however many dates I put in F2. I don't need any more columns. And my start number would be zero because the first date I want to return is the start date, zero months on from the start date. So I close the bracket twice, press enter, and it returns all these serial numbers. I select the cells, convert them to dates, or format them as dates, and you can see that that is working. If I change the number of months to five, it would return five months. Okay, so if you want to autofill dates a year apart, this is what you would do. You would use the date function. And it has three arguments, year, month, and day. Now, what we need to do is extract the year portion of our start date, the month portion of it, and the day portion of it. So to extract the year portion, I would use the year function. Year I3. And I need to increase that year as the formula auto fills down. So I can use the sequence function to do that. Rows, well, the number of dates I want to return is specified here. I don't need any more columns. And the start number would be zero. So the first year needs to be the same as the start date year. Comma. And then month, I need to extract the month part of this date, and I can use the month function for that. And then day, I can use the day function to extract the day portion of this date. So if I press enter, and I'll need to format all these cells with the date format. And if I change the number of years to five, it would return five dates one year apart. Okay, what if you want to autofill working days based on a date in another cell? Now to do this, you would use the workday function. So I'm assuming here that working days are Monday through to Friday. So my start date would be here. 
and the number of days that I want to move on from that start date, I can calculate using the sequence function. So I want 10 dates. I don't need any more columns. And my start number is going to be zero because I want to return the start date in the first instance. So close the bracket there, close the bracket there, press enter. And if I format these dates now, I'm going to format these dates in a particular way so it shows the day of the week. In fact, let's select a few more cells. With the cell selected, I'm going to use the shortcut key Control 1. And in this dialog box, I'm going to go to the custom category. I'm going to delete general. And in this type box, I'm going to type 4Ds, space D, space 4Ms, space 3Ys. Click on OK. And that will show the day of the week as a word. So you can see I'm just getting Mondays through to Fridays. Now, the other thing you can do here is specify that certain Monday through to Friday dates are holidays. So I've listed my holidays here. And I can use the last argument here, the holidays argument, to specify those holiday dates. So now you'll see it's skipped over the 10th and the 13th of March. OK, what if your working days weren't Monday to Friday? Say they were Monday to Wednesday. Well, you can do this using Workday International. So my start date would be here in Q3. Days, I'm returning using the sequence function. So rows specified up here. Don't need any more columns. Start would be zero. Close the bracket comma. Now, weekends. Now, you can select the pattern of non-working time here. So, for example, if your non-working days were Monday and Tuesday, you could just select this option. If your only non-working day was Sunday, you could select 11. But we want to say that only Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday are working days. Now, to do this, I'll start with the speech mark. And then I'm going to put a zero in for a working day and a one in for a non-working day. And it starts on Monday. So Monday is a working day. Tuesday is a working day. Wednesday is a working day. Thursday is non-working. So it's Friday, Saturday and Sunday. So I close that with a speech mark. Close the bracket. Press Enter. And I'm going to format these dates using the same format that I've applied here. So I'm going to select a cell that contains the format, go to the Format Painter, and then copy that format to these cells. So if I change the number of days I want to return to 10, you can still see that it's just returning Mondays through to Wednesdays. So if you have the sequence function, this is the best way to autofill dates based on another cell. Now, if you don't have the sequence function, this is what you would do. Now, without the sequence function, you can specify your start date and then add the result of the row function. Now, the row function returns the row number of the set address that you specify. So if I click in A1, the row number for A1 is 1. So that returns one day on from our start date. Now, we actually want to return the start date. So I need to say minus 1 at the end. Now, using this method, I am going to have to copy the formula down. We didn't have to do that with the sequence function. So because of that, I need to lock the reference to C3. So I click somewhere in that cell reference, and then I'm pressing F4 on my keyboard, and that will put the dollars in that cell reference, which means it's a locked cell reference. As we copy the formula down, it's always going to refer to that cell address. If F4 doesn't work for you, try function F4. If that doesn't work, just type the dollars in. So if I copy this down, you can see it increments the date. Now, if you need to be able to specify the number of dates that are autofilled, you need to put this within the if function. So we'd say if row A1 is less than or equal to the value I have in C2, which I also need to lock, comma, then my value of true would be this formula. Otherwise, 
I want an empty text string. So two speech marks, nothing in between. Close the bracket, press enter. And now if I copy this down, it'll only show four dates. If I change this to 10, it will show 10 dates. Now, if you needed to arrange your dates across a row, so it's column headings, you would use the column function. So equals this start date plus column. And for column, what it's going to do is return the column position of the cell reference that you specify. So A1's column position is 1. So if I press Enter, you can see it returns one date on from this date. Now I do want to return that date. So all I do is I say minus one. And because I need to copy this across, I need to lock the reference to C3. So now if I copy that across, you can see it increments the dates. Now if I want it to respond to the number of days I input there, I use if again. Logical tests would be column a1 less than or equal to this value here which i need to lock if true return the result of this formula otherwise return an empty text string so if i copy this across then i can change this number and it will return the correct number of dates now for months, we'd use edate. So my start date would be here. And the number of months I want to return, I'd use the row function for. So row a1 minus one, because the first date I want to return is the start date. Close the bracket, press enter. Now, because I'll be copying this formula down, I do need to lock my reference to F3. If I copy this down, format it with the short date format, you can see it autofills the month element of the date. Now, if I want it to respond to the number of months I put up here, I use that if function trick. So if row A1 is less than or equal to the number of dates I specify up here, and I need to lock that reference, then return the result of the edate function, otherwise return an empty text string. Copy that down. And if I change this to three, I'd only get three dates. Now for the year one, we would use the date function. So first of all, I need to specify the year of the date I want to return. So I'd have to extract the year of the start date. I can do that using the year function. And I would need to add X number of years to that date. So for that, I can use the row function again, row A1. And for the first date, I want to return the current year. So that'd be minus one. Then I'd need to extract the month portion of this date. So that's using the month function and then the day portion of our start date. So I can use the day function for that. Now, because I want to copy this down, I need to lock my reference to I3, and then copy it down. So all these dates are one year apart. If I want the number of dates to correspond to whatever number I put in here, I use the if function trick, so row, a1 is less than or equal to the number of dates I'm specifying here. Lock that reference. If that's true, return the result of this date function. Otherwise, return an empty text string. If I put in three here, I get three dates. Working days. For this, you'd use the workday function. Start date would be my start date here. Now I'm assuming Monday to Fridays are the working days. Days argument, well, I return that using the row function again. So row A1. First date I want to return is the current date, so minus one. 
And I close the bracket, press enter. Now, because I need to copy this down, I need to lock my reference to L3. Then I can copy it down. And I'm going to apply a custom format here so it shows the day of the week. So with those cells selected, Control-1 on my keyboard, go down to Custom. And in this type box, I'm going to type four Ds, space 1D, space 4Ms, space 3Ys. So you can see I'm only getting Monday through to Fridays. Now, if I want to exclude holiday dates, I can use the last argument within the Workday function, which is holidays. So comma, and then select those holiday dates. And I need to lock the reference to those holiday dates. And if I copy that down, you'll see it skips over the 10th and the 13th of March. Now, if you want to specify non-standard, non-working days, for example, we're going to say that our non-working days are Thursday through to Sunday, you can use the Workday International function. So my start date would be in Q3. The number of days I'm returning with the row function, row A1. The first date I want to return is the current start date, so that's minus one. Weekends. Now, you can see in this list, you can easily specify, for example, that Monday and Tuesday are your non-working days, or Sunday only is your non-working day. But in our example, we want to specify that Thursday through to Sunday are non-working days. So there's nothing in this list that supports our particular need. So what you can do in speech mark is put a series of zeros and ones. Zeros are working days and ones are non-working days. And we start with Monday. So Monday is a zero. It's a working day. So it's Tuesday. So it's Wednesday. Then Thursday, Friday, Saturday and Sunday are non-working days. So if I close the bracket, press enter. So I do need to lock my reference to Q3 before I copy down. Copy this down. And I'm going to borrow the format that I applied over here. So select one of those cells, click on the Format Painter, and copy the format over these dates. You can see all the dates are Mondays through to Wednesdays. And if I want it to be dynamic, so it responds to whatever number of days I put in here, I just use that if function trick, if row A1 is less than or equal to the number I input in Q2, then return the result of the Workday International function, otherwise return an empty text string. And I do need to lock my reference to Q2 before I copy down. Now, if I change this to three, I'll only get three dates. Okay, that's all I wanted to cover in this particular video. You can download the file with all these different formulas. But if you found it useful, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe, and I'll see you next video.